My entitled father-in-law constantly makes a scene at all of my kids' sporting events. As he likes to cause unnecessary arguments with everybody in the crowd, humiliating me, my kids, and my wife in the process. And now, after we banned him from showing up to any of our kids' games any longer, he's turned into an immature jerk, causing a massive rift between my wife and the rest of her family. And at this point, we seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, so my septuagenarian father-in-law loves going to our kids' athletic events. We're talking football, soccer, baseball, softball, pretty much everything. The kids are great athletes and the games are a lot of fun. My father-in-law fits the stereotypical boomer profile. He's white, he's Catholic, and he thinks Republicans are good and Democrats are bad. Anything on Fox News is his gospel, and nothing that runs contrary to his beliefs has any merit, no matter how practical or logical. Now, we live a few blocks from him and my mother-in-law. We see them regularly, and my mother-in-law is my wife's best girlfriend. My mother-in-law comes over to the house several times every week, and it is very rare that these two women don't speak at least once. They really do have a great relationship. I get frustrated with my father-in-law, even as a guy that doesn't get upset about politics, but I love and support my wife, and it's important to her that we have a good relationship with her mom and dad. The wife and I say to each other, man, he can be a jerk sometimes, but we want him in our lives and in our children's lives. We have our own flaws and understand that family can be frustrating, and that door certainly swings both ways. In the past, we have had issues with my father-in-law being overbearing at athletic events. He believes he's being supportive, but he is tone deaf as to how he sounds, and he is very critical when offering helpful coaching at games. This past fall in the middle of the season, our daughter, who is nine years old, asked if we could tell my father-in-law to not come to the soccer games because his coaching from the sidelines was making her uncomfortable, which makes sense because he would yell and be very loud. She didn't want to hurt his feelings and wanted us to send the message. When my wife mentioned it to her mom, who then passed it along to my father-in-law, his response was that our daughter would never ask him not to come to games. Well, she did. He seemed to accept that he needs to be more aware of how he comes across to other players and parents. He sulked around for a few weeks, and then he got over it, and was then granted permission to come to games after a brief talk about being less of a spectacle. He gave no apologies and no promises to reform, but just kind of let out a grunt and said okay. Well, with that in mind, here comes the real drama. Basketball season gets going and my daughter's team plays well and makes it to the playoffs. We are all in the gym for a playoff game a few weeks ago and not even a full quarter into the game and my father-in-law is educating a mother from the opposing team on rules of the game and he's just being abrasive and not informative at all. It's basically him saying I'm right and you're wrong. He knows he's being argumentative and he's happy to prove to anyone in earshot of how right he is. Things get to the point where the mother is moving seats to put distance between her and my father-in-law. I tap my wife to take her attention away from our daughter playing to let her know that there's a situation going on. To her credit, she's sitting on the other side of our group and the noise in the gym is masking the increasing volume of the interaction. Now, why did I bring it to my wife's attention instead of addressing it myself? Well, that's because I've had interactions with my father-in-law on this very subject as well as other subjects similar and my first inclination would be to tell him to shut up at a volume and tone that would be very startling. As that would not be the best approach to defuse the situation. My thought was that his grown adult daughter may have some more success. We're looking to put water on the brush fire and not napalm. She walks to where he is and politely asks him to let it go, then goes back over to sit down. A few moments later, not even a full minute, my father-in-law is back to educating the other mother. So my wife gets up and asks him more sternly to knock it off and then returns to her seat. Parents from both teams are looking over to see what the commotion is and it's pretty clear to everyone what's happening. Well, less than a minute later, he's back at it again. My wife goes over again and tells him to stop talking, but this time, my father-in-law says, no, I will absolutely not. Now, for some reason, this absolutely rocked me. The first reason is that I've never heard him talk to his daughter like that before, and secondly, I was floored by the lack of respect for his adult daughter and the mother to five of his grandchildren. Maybe I had been blind to it before, but it was so clear that he would walk over her if his ego was threatened. I was equally enraged and sad at this point, but I had had enough. I lean over, make eye contact with him, and I say loud enough to be heard over the basketball game, you need to shut your mouth. And I'm surprised a swear word didn't come along with that statement. Well, he stopped talking. He doesn't say a word for the rest of the game, and when the game is over, he leaves without a goodbye or a congratulations to my daughter for the win. My wife and I know there's going to be blowback, and that I'm going to be the bad guy in my father-in-law's narrative, and I'm honestly okay 
okay with that. I can be the jerk in his fiction because I know my ego will survive. My wife and I know what happened, and I want my father-in-law to know that I'll stand up to anyone that disrespects his daughter, even if that person is him. And what I'm not okay with is my father-in-law's treatment of his daughter. I suggest to my wife that if her dad ever comes to another game, then there's three things that need to happen. For starters, he needs to apologize to my wife, he needs to behave at all functions, and he needs to agree that if anyone asks him to stop, then he will do so immediately, regardless of if it's strangers, coaches, or the referees. The next day, my wife gets a call from her mom to announce her dad's decision on what our punishment will be. He won't be coming to our house if I'm there, he won't be coming to events if I'm present, and he will not be attending Easter Sunday brunch with us. My thought was, wow, you're going to back yourself into a corner here, aren't you? Okay, let's see how you play poker with no chips. My wife tells my father-in-law through my mother-in-law that because we're children and have to play telephone, that he will not be allowed to attend softball or baseball games if he maintains his position. Now, we have not had any direct interaction with him for a few weeks now, but my wife and her mom talk daily. My mother-in-law says that my father-in-law is her husband and she has to support him. My wife explains that one can support their spouse without supporting every thought, feeling, or action. I mean, my mother-in-law is in a bad spot because my father-in-law is essentially pushing her to take his side for acting like a jerk, and otherwise she is not a supportive spouse, which is very childlike behavior from a senior citizen. Over this past weekend, I was traveling and I get a call from the wife, and this is where the Cold War has gone hot. My mother-in-law called to ask what time our daughter's softball games will be this weekend. My wife tells her the times and reminds her that she is welcome, but my father-in-law is not. Well, my mother-in-law says, oh, that's silly, it's been long enough. My wife responds by saying, these are literally the first games of the season. He has not missed any athletic events. There have been no consequences for him yet. So no, he is not invited. Well, this is where things get dark. My mother-in-law ups the ante and asks if my wife is planning to be at the games. My wife says that she will be, and my mother-in-law says, then I don't want to go. Your father is wrong for not respecting you, but you need to respect him. I don't want to be around you if you can't respect your father. My heart hurt when I heard this. My wife loves her mother, and they are very close friends. My father-in-law is making my mother-in-law stand behind his misbehavior and causing a rift between my mother-in-law and my wife. My wife says that she's hurt by her mom, but if she wants to hurt feelings, then my wife will play along. My wife says there will be no contact with our families. My mother-in-law says, you're not going to keep the grandchildren from us, are you? And my wife responded by saying yes. And that's honestly where it stands as of today. I'm not sure how this will play out, but I believe my father-in-law is about to learn how truly ineffective he really is. Wow, your father-in-law is acting like a child. Like, seriously, the way he's acting is super immature. First of all, if you're going to kids' sporting events, you need to just relax and realize that all the kids on that field really suck. They're just kids playing games, and yes, it can be competitive, but it shouldn't be at the expense of everybody else around you. Like, they're not competing for some national championship, and they're not going to go pro anytime soon. They are literally just kids, so just let them play their game. So when someone acts like the father-in-law in this story and freaks out about how things are going in the game, trying to educate people around them, like that is really cringy behavior and nobody needs to deal with that. Like that really is insane to me and honestly, I just can't stand when people act like that. And it's also crazy to me that the father-in-law wouldn't accept the fact that their granddaughter is saying, hey, don't show up to my soccer game. Like that guy has to lack a lot of self-awareness to not understand the effect he's having on everybody else around him. He's literally making a scene at these kids' games and making everything awkward for everybody. So you know what? With all things considered, I don't blame you for a second for going this route and drawing a very clear line in the sand that they must abide by, otherwise they're not going to see the kids. Because this father-in-law's behavior is incredibly disruptive. And in my opinion, there's absolutely no good excuse for the way he's behaving. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. An entitled customer ruins my day literally three minutes into the job as she calls in complaining ready to start a fight. And I'm honestly so done with customers like this and I really hope I don't have to deal with her ever again. Here's what happened. So this just happened now and I really need to vent about this. Exactly three minutes after I opened the store that I work at, a customer called in. It was a lady complaining about receiving an incorrect item for an online order. She gave me an invoice number which belonged to a man, I'll call him Bob, not his real name, and she was calling on his behalf apparently. She said that she received this one item and not this other one that she was actually looking for. This then reminded me 
of an email that I just saw in the inbox of a man complaining about the same thing. The name on the email was the same on the invoice, so it was the same issue. I then said, I'm sorry, hold on, did Bob email about this already? The lady on the line said, yes, he did, but he hasn't received a reply. So I responded by saying, we've been open for three minutes, and he emailed me after closing yesterday. We haven't had any time to reply. The lady responded by saying, so, what are you going to do about it? I thought to myself, so? I mean, I understand that we messed up, and we will, of course, remedy the situation, but we've only been open for three minutes. I mean, give us time to actually sit down and assess the situation. What sort of entitled, impatient jerk just says to themselves, well, Bob hasn't received a reply in three minutes. I have to call and bother these people now. Now, she knows we've only been open for three minutes because she would have seen the opening time when she Googled our phone number. She also probably waited until nine o'clock in the morning to call because she knew that we would be closed until then. I could not believe the entitlement. So I said to her, what I'll do is I'll reply to his email when I get the chance. Now, the lady on the other line sounded audibly annoyed. She said to me, what? Why not just do it now while I'm on the phone? I then said to her again, we have been open for three minutes. The only reason I know of Bob's email is because the first thing I do every morning is scan the inbox for urgent emails that need addressing first. I saw Bob's but skipped it because there are more urgent emails. I will be addressing those first because they are time sensitive. And then I'll email other people because they email before Bob. We will let Bob know of the solution once we reach his email. The lady then said, okay, fine, whatever. And then she hung up the phone. Now, I don't know who she was to Bob or if Bob is as entitled as she is, but this delightful lady expected a reply to his email within three minutes of us opening and then expected me to help him before other people just because she called to bother me. But you know what? That is definitely not going to happen. Other people need my help as well and they have waited their turn patiently. You are not entitled to jump the queue just because you are more impatient. Yeah, when I've worked customer service, dealing with people like this is absolutely obnoxious. It really does ruin your day when you're literally just starting the day and these people are calling in already upset at you. Like you haven't even had a chance to have any good interactions and then all of a sudden, top of the morning, time to really ruin everything. And the original poster, by the way, is completely right. There are probably other people inside that email address that definitely emailed before Bob. And just because you're calling sooner doesn't mean you're going to get priority over other people who already emailed. Like if I was one of the people that already emailed ahead of this lady and I found out that I was not getting help before this lady, I would also be pretty upset because that just wouldn't be fair. Like effectively, that lady's cutting in line in front of all these other people, but she just doesn't care about it. So truly, I really do relate with the original poster because sometimes customers can be absolutely obnoxious. Am I the jerk for refusing to go on vacation with my family? All because I've been making massive gains in the gym and I don't want to lose all that progress over the weeks that I will be gone because right now I'm being called a jerk and at this point I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. I'm an 18 year old male and a senior in high school. My family are immigrants and we go back to the country my parents are from every summer to visit family. They're planning to this summer and I just don't want to go with them. My reasoning is that I've been going to the gym for a year and a half and I have made some good progress and I would lose a lot of those gains if I were to not work out for two months. I initially asked if I could get a gym membership while we were there, but they said that no, because we will be going across the country to visit family that lives in different places, and we won't be in any place more than a week or two, so it just won't be practical. I asked them if I can bring a set of dumbbells with me, and they said no, because it would be extra weight in the suitcases, which would then mean having to pay the airline extra. I then asked if I could at least buy some dumbbells while we're there with my own money, and again, they said no, as those would be a pain to carry around. They said that if I wanted to, I could do stuff like push-ups and it would be just as good. But the issue is, is that this isn't true. A lot of my lifts, all of the big ones such as bench, deadlift, and squat are significantly more than my body weight. For example, my bench is 225 and I'm 160 pounds. So if I were to replace bench press with push-ups to hit my chest, I'd be giving a lot less stimulus to my chest and my muscle mass would decline. They said it's just muscle and it doesn't matter. But I've been busting my butt for a long time time working out six days a week, staying consistent for my diet and all this other stuff. So watching that progress go down the drain really bothers me. They say that I'm a jerk for not wanting to spend time with my family, but I think they're being unreasonable. I suggested three different compromises that would allow me to keep my gains and I would be okay going with them in any of those cases, but they said no to all of them. So honestly, am I the jerk in this situation? What should I 
do. Okay, I'm gonna be completely honest, and I say this in a nice way, but yes, I do think you are being a jerk right now. And trust me, I understand where you're coming from. You've been going to the gym, and you've made a lot of progress in your personal health and like your personal fitness. And as someone who's walked that path recently, I totally get it. It makes sense as to why you would want to keep that up, and I completely understand where you're coming from. But on the other end of this, I think it really just doesn't make sense for you to be like, no, I can't go visit family because I gotta work out. Maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I would be very surprised if you lost all that muscle mass and all those gains literally over a summer just because you visited family. Like, sure, maybe there might be some small, noticeable difference, but like, seriously, family's not gonna be around forever, and it doesn't sound like you have any, like, real conflict with them or, like, you don't like them or anything like that. It just sounds like you don't wanna go because you wanna work out instead, and that just sounds really counterintuitive in my opinion, because I gotta be honest, spending time with your family over the summer doesn't sound like a bad idea, especially if you're close with that family and you enjoy being around that family. If you didn't like them, that would be a completely different story. But for you to be like, oh man, I don't want to go because I want to work out, it almost comes off as you being really shallow and acting like you can't take any time off just to see your family. Because I think your family's right. There are several alternatives that you could easily do while you're away out of the country. Like there might even be gyms in the cities that you would go to that offer free trials for like a week that you could easily take advantage of. Like you could go there, get your workouts in and still spend time with your family. So overall, in my opinion, I think you're being very short-sighted in this regard, and I think it would be a massive mistake to miss out spending time with your family. Because from the sounds of it, it really does seem like your reasoning for wanting to stay home just doesn't quite add up. And I just think that overall, that would be a massive mistake. Am I the jerk for not giving my friend my bread recipe? Also, she can make her own bread and compete with me in my own business. Because right now, my friend group is split over this. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, to start things out, I'm a sourdough baker. I've been baking sourdough for six years since I was a senior in high school in a teeny tiny apartment. So to qualify it as a passion is nearly an understatement. Many of my friends bake as well. Now, I run an in-home bakery to make extra money on the side as a stay-at-home mom while my husband works. And we've been able to consistently pay our bills with the money this bread brings in. One of my closer friends wanted to start baking sourdough this past November. She asked if she could have some starter which I normally sell, and I gifted it to her. She and I talk on the phone at least weekly, so I didn't have an issue not charging her anything for it. In fact, until recently, the thought didn't even cross my mind. Only last week did my husband mention that it's strange for a friend to not offer to pay for services or products that I normally charge for. But either way, I gave her a jar and I didn't think twice, and life just went on as normal. Now, I have to say, this particular friend is known as the vampire in our group. She'll date a guy or be become really good friends with someone and then just take parts of their personality as her own. Most of her hobbies came about this way and it's made relationships difficult for her. She never had a successful loaf of bread after nearly 20 tries until I came to stay for a weekend and walked her through everything meticulously using the recipe that she'd been trying. Her bread is still inconsistent which is very normal early on with sourdough and yet she kept bringing it up as her supposed passion. A few days pass by and all of a sudden I see pictures of stores bought bread come up on her social media on the days I normally post promo shots or menus. Now, I'm not the Instagram police, but I just had a gut feeling that she was trying to be competitive about it, because it's happened before with her and the original owners of her hobbies, for lack of a better phrase. So, I let it play out, and then I totally baited her. I told her on the phone one morning that I was waiting for my camera battery to charge, because I needed to take pictures of some bread to post that day. Almost immediately, she posted a picture of her own bread bread. I called her out on it and she said that it was too pretty not to post, but it was very obviously an old photo based on the snow outside. Within a week, she was talking about opening her own in-house bakery, and then she asked for all of my recipes, but I flat out told her no. I made some joke about them being my own Powerpuff Girls experiment that I've spent the last six years perfecting, and when I said that, she got so angry about it. Some of our mutual friends reached out and said that I was too rude and that I should just give her the recipe because it's obvious that she's lonely. But I literally make money off of this. I wouldn't ask an artist to send me a commission for free, all because I'm curious to make my own art. Well, as a result, this somehow split our friend group. And I'm honestly just so tired of feeling leeched. And my friends that she has done this also feel the same way as me. So honestly, am I the jerk for not giving out my bread recipes? What should I do? No, you're definitely not the jerk. She's clearly trying to rip off what you do for a living and try and pass it off 
as her own. Like she's only doing this because you're doing it in the first place and you're successful enough where you can actually pay your bills through this hobby. And those recipes are literally everything that makes or breaks your business. Like you literally said it best. You spent the last six years perfecting this recipe. Why on earth would you be expected to hand that over to a friend just so she can rip off your recipe and try and like dilute your client base? Like that's insane to me and I don't blame you for saying no, you're not going to get my recipe. You were already gracious enough to help her out and give her some starter as well as help her out with the recipe that she was working with. But what she's asking now is completely over the line. This is inappropriate and there's no way I would ever say yes to that. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.